Here we see a shot of uh, Ian Croft's Lotus Plus 2. This was originally owned by Graham Hill. So it's got quite a good history. I'm now with Ian Croft. Good morning, Ian, and welcome to the Classic Motor Show 2022. Good morning, thank you very much. Pleased to be here. Can you tell me something about this Lotus Plus 2, please? Yes, I certainly can. Lotus so, Elan Plus 2. <laughs> Lotus Elan Plus 2, yes. Um, so this was Graham Hill's car when he drove for Lotus in uh, 1968 and 1969. Um, the car was registered in uh, the middle of 1968. Um, Graham had to give it back to Lotus because it remained their car. Um, he gave it back after Colin Chapman dispensed with his services at the end of 1969. Like a company car then? Yes, so it was like a company car indeed. Um, and uh, it then was sold by Lotus um, in late 1970 um, with various documentation confirming um, that it was Graham's car um, and it then went through three or four different hands before I bought it. When I bought it it had been sitting in a garage for 35 years um, gradually deteriorating and it was in a pretty poor state. Um, it was painted yellow at the time, the rear suspension had collapsed, um, the um, interior was filthy, the engine bay was in terrible state and I took it to pieces every last nut and bolt as they say um, and restored it to the state you see now which is as close as I could possibly get it to how it was when it left the factory. And a, a, nut, a, a nut and bolt up restoration is something, that's what they call it isn't it? Uh, yeah nut and bolt chassis up I think is what <laughs> they say um, so yes, so, uh, so the body has been off the chassis, um, everything has been repaired, refreshed, or um, if it couldn't do anything otherwise, it's been replaced. So what was the hardest job, or the most difficult, you know? Oh goodness, the most difficult individual job, um, possibly surprisingly, is getting this rear screen into place, um, which is the devil's own job. Um, but the thing that took the longest is finding missing parts um, where the car had been bodged and incorrect parts had been installed. So I have spent uh, hours, un hours and hours. untold amounts of time <laughs> tracking down correct parts, buying new parts, which of course don't fit um, and have to be altered to make sure that they do. Um, had a lot of help from a lady called Sue Miller who um, supplies Lotus spares. Um, it's been very helpful to me. Um, and uh, after dismantling the car, um, having various work done, um, I reassembled it all myself. Yeah, okay. Um, what I was going to say was, so do you, do you use it every day? I certainly, no, I don't use it every day. It's not really practical for everyday use. Um, I've got everyday cars. I have taken it to um, the supermarket and friends and various things, um, but mostly I use it for going to, sh to shows, um, some quite long distance. Um, although, to be totally honest, to be 100% sure of getting it here on time, um, I brought it on a trailer. So it's on a trailer today then? Sorry? On a trailer today. So it got here on a trailer, yes, that's right. Well, it's, uh, you've done a wonderful job on it, Ian, and uh, it brought it back to its original state. Brilliant. So, uh, have you entered this um, competition before? No, I haven't. No, I, was, I came to the show last year, um, although I had been previously. Um, somehow, and I can't remember how, got myself on the show organisers' uh, mailing list and they sent out various mailings during the course of the year, including, would you like to display your car at the show, um, mentioning the Pride of Ownership competition, um, and I sent in an entry form, and I was one of the chosen 20 finalists. Um, there are actually 19 cars here altogether, because one never made it, um, and it would be nice to win the competition with the most votes from visitors. Well, good luck with that, Ian, and uh, thank you very much for the interview. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good, good to see you. Good to talk to you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Very much. Thank you. Thank you.